Good evening, and welcome to another episode of Tales from the City. Tonight's episode is called Blood and Diamonds. It's a tale of lies, deceit, and murder. The setting, the city. Not a friendly city, but a city that struggles with the ongoing fight between good and evil. Sometimes good wins, sometimes evil. The struggle has been going on so long, many have forgotten to keep score. Our story begins with the down-on-his-luck private eye detective. He seems to be shooting a blank in the crime-solving game. Bills are piling up, bill collectors are calling, and his luck seems to be running out. Until an unsuspecting knock comes to his door. Hastily, the private eye opens the door. Much to his surprise, his eyes are greeted with a pleasant late-night surprise. The well-dressed young woman greets him with her story. She is the recent widow of a rich and powerful Duke of Flebshire, who was murdered recently in an unsuspected attack late one night. The case was closed quickly on the story, but the beautiful widow suspect, suspects there is something more to her late husband's murder. She tells the story of found love, a dream marriage, and then her heartbreak. She wants the private eye to look into this so-called accident, mugging turned murder. She offers cold hard cash up front, something most customers don't come by very easy. Eagerly, he takes the case. They part ways and the detective starts looking into the case. First stop, his old beat partner, Thomas O'Malley. This burnt out old beat cop was still burning the midnight oil when he arrived. A sharp knock to the door brings Thomas O'Malley to attention. The conversation turns heated. O'Malley is definitely offended that his old friend has come knocking and digging in his backyard. The inquiry starts to turn ugly very quickly, with O'Malley offering little help but just the suggestions to let sleeping dogs alone. You don't want any part of this, Mr. Private Eye, were the last words he said before he shut his old friend down. Earlier that day, Svetlana stumbles across something very disturbing. She decides to keep her find to herself. Unfortunately, her carelessness has led the Harris to levy upon her a stern warning about what she had discovered, or else. He arrives at the Harris's penthouse. She is not home, but the maid Svetlana is busy going about her duties. He decides to ask a few simple questions. But judging by her quick apprehension to his inquiry, he suspects that she knows more. He tries to squeeze her for information, but the old Mino speak English routine frustrates him and leaves. The private eye decides to reinvestigate the crime scene. He scours it with a fine tooth comb, and to his surprise, a clue that the competent city police had missed, a turquoise diamond. The private eye decides to return back to Officer O'Malley and reveal to him what he had found at the crime scene and to discuss Svetlana's behavior. To his surprise, someone had gotten O'Malley first, and an interesting find was discovered as the new crime scene, Turquoise Diamonds. It seemed this plot of blood and diamonds was expanding, two murders littered with diamonds. He now had a solid hunch, now to go back and press Svetlana for more information. He arrived at Suite 609 of the Harris, but only to find Svetlana lying dead, covered in blood and diamonds. He begins to investigate the scene, finding a feather from her death mop, more turquoise diamonds, and the ring of the Harris covered in blood and diamonds. There was no other explanation. The Harris who had hired him was the killer. Why did she weave him into the tangled web of lies and deceit? Was it money, fame, or power? Well, the city knows, and the city won't tell. Let's chalk one up for evil. Maybe next time, good will prevail. <laughs>